Welcome to First United Methodist Church Richardson Online. I'm Rohini Drake, Director of Welcoming and Online Ministries at FUMCR, where we welcome people for Christ, grow people in Christ, and serve people with Christ. Today, we are celebrating women in ministry at FUMCR, both online and in person. The ministry of women predates the Methodist movement as we see many examples of women in the Bible who served, taught, and shared the good news. We'd like to take a moment today to highlight United Women in Faith and how the ministry of this organization touches lives both locally and abroad. If you aren't familiar with United Women in Faith, they're a group driven by God's love and united in sisterhood to work together to improve the lives of women, children, and youth. They provide support for the needs of women and children in our congregation and our local community, as well as financially supporting UWF nationally and internationally. Smaller groups called circles meet locally for fellowship and most importantly, to create plans for action. For more information on how you can get involved or support United Women in Faith, visit the link on your screen or text us for more information. Speaking of texting, Feel free to text us at the number at the bottom of your screen anytime during this service or throughout this week to ask us questions and share how we can support you or celebrate with you through prayer. Whether you're joining us for the first time or you worship with us regularly, we want you to know that you're part of our church family and we want to support, encourage, and pray for you. just sit, and I could just sit and wait for all your goodness, hope to feel your presence, and I could just stay, and I could just stay right where I am and hope to feel, hope to feel something again. from the inside and I could be safe oh, and I could be safe here in your arms and never leave home never let these walls down you have called me higher and you have called me deeper and I'll go where you will lead me Lord you have called me higher and you have called me from the inside and I could be safe oh, and I could be safe here in your arms and never leave home never let these walls down you have called me higher and you have called me deeper and I'll go where you will lead me Lord. And you have called me higher Before me, you have called me higher, 
Welcome to Children's Time. I'm Miss Natalie, and I'm so happy to be here with you today. I'm really excited because today is a special day. We are celebrating women and the ways they help to share God's love. Did you know there are about 93 women mentioned in the Bible, and 49 of those women are mentioned by name? Women are an important part of our faith story and history. You know, when I think about special women in my life, so many come to mind. One special person in my life is my Aunt Ruby. Aunt Ruby had so many special talents. She was an excellent painter, so good, her paintings even ended up in the Capitol building. While I love her painting, my favorite thing about my Aunt Ruby was her love for tulips. She had the most magnificent garden every spring, filled with hundreds and hundreds of colorful tulips. I love the joy those tulips brought to her and so many of her friends each year. Today, we are going to hear stories of two women in the Bible, Mary and Martha. Mary and Martha were friends of Jesus. They both chose to honor her and be good friends to Jesus in their own ways. Mary sits at the feet of Jesus and listens to Jesus, while Martha prepares the meal and the house for Jesus. Some people think spending time with Jesus is better than doing things, and other people think doing things is better than sitting around. You know what? I think both Mary and Martha were being a good friend in different ways. When I remember my Aunt Ruby and our special friendship, I like to remember some of the ways I honored her through our friendship. I would go to her house, sit and talk with her and learn from her. We would write letters back and forth and share pictures of our gardens. She is one that taught me how to grow my tulips. I continue to honor her each spring by planting a garden and adding tulips into my garden to remember her. I know each spring by planting the tulips, it brings a smile to her face. I want you to take a minute to think about the special women in your life. Is it your mom, your grandma, your teacher, or one of the pastors at the church? Now think of ways that you can share love with that person. Can you spend time with them and learn from them? Can you do something to help them out? These are all ways that we can share our love with those around us. And when we share our love with others, that makes Jesus smile. Will you say a prayer with me? Dear Jesus, thank you for your friends, Mary and Martha. Thank you for the ways they taught us to share love by listening and by doing. Help us to show this love with others in our lives. Help us to remember that we are each a blessing and can bless others around. In your name we pray, amen. Amen, and thank you, Natalie, for another wonderful children's moment. It is so good to be with you in worship today with First United Methodist Church Richardson. My name is Allison Jean, and I'm the pastor of Modern Worship here. And I'm so excited as we turn our attention to a beautiful story in the book of Luke, which is in the second half of your Bible called the New Testament. We're turning to chapter 10. So I encourage you, pull your Bible off your shelf or pull your favorite scripture app up on your phone, and let's read these words together from Luke chapter 10, starting in verse 38. Now as they went on their way, he entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. So she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. We read this scripture as we arrive at a special point of celebration for First United Methodist Church Richardson as we recognize women in ministry. And so as we turn our attention to these two women in this story and to the women of our church and how they serve and lead, I invite you to join me in prayer. Gracious and loving God, may the words I speak and the thoughts and prayers on all of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable to you, our rock, our Redeemer, our Savior of the world. Amen. Methodism is unique in that we recognize women in ministry. And it might be that you assume that we're talking only of women in ministry in our church today. 
And that's true, but we also reach back into the very beginnings of the Christian movement when we see Mary and Martha and other women like them participating in the movement of following Christ. Women have been here from the very beginning. And so as we're reading the story of Mary and Martha, we are challenged to read them as disciples and not just as guests. In fact, it actually starts much earlier than this if we go back to Luke chapter 8 and we hear these words. Soon afterward, Jesus went on through the cities and villages, proclaiming and bringing the good news of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him, and also some women who had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities. Mary called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out, and Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Herod's household manager, and Susanna, and many others who provided for them out of their means. So we see here in Luke chapter 8, and then again in Luke chapter 10, that women are a crucial part of the ministry of Jesus. And in fact, they are active participants in what God is doing. Did you hear that at the end of that passage? that women are providing out of their own means. And we actually see that to be true here in the story that we just read from Luke chapter 10 as Jesus comes to the house of Martha. We notice that there's no male household name that is given in this instance, which is very unusual. So this is Martha's house. This is Martha's own place that she lives and works and sleeps and, and spends her life in. And she has offered it up to Christ, to Jesus, to visit and to, to stay with. And when I read this story, a lot of times I don't really like it very much, if I'm being honest. I, I get a little defensive. I get a little sensitive when I hear people preaching about Martha and how she's busy and distracted and all these things. And it's probably because I am Martha. I'm the one that everybody comes to our house for a family gathering and we're all playing games and watching football and doing all these fun things. And where will you typically find me? I'm in the kitchen. <sighs> I'm doing dishes. I'm sorting the laundry. I'm picking up baby toys. I'm doing all of these things because I just, I like doing. I like being active. I like being busy. But sometimes it's more than that. Sometimes I'm doing dishes or I'm sorting the laundry because I'm feeling anxious or I'm feeling nervous or I'm worried about something that I can't control. And so where do I find myself in the kitchen trying to exercise my anxiety? Have you ever had a kitchen conversation? You know what I'm talking about? When all the family's over, maybe it's for Thanksgiving or Christmas, and everybody's busy in the living room, hanging out together. But one or two people find their way to the kitchen and they're scraping plates or filling the dishwasher or drying dishes. And a lot of times in those quieter moments of the kitchen, some really difficult conversations can be had. Those, those kitchen conversations where topics you might not share with the whole group are brought up. Those moments between, you know, for me, it's usually me and my mom, where we share something that maybe I don't want the whole family to know about. Now, the text doesn't say this, but I can honestly almost imagine that that is the way this happens between Jesus and Martha. He's come to her house and she has really decided who she thinks Jesus is. We see this in the way that she refers to him. Because in Luke chapter 10, she repeatedly says the word Lord. She says the word Lord, which is this sign of respect and admiration, this recognition that Jesus is more than just a rabbi. So she's been traveling with him in this group of women. She has been following Jesus and those typical disciples that we often think of. Maybe you think of them from that painting by Leonardo da Vinci, all of the men, but those women have been there too. And she has been following this rabbi and wondering who he is. Where is this interesting teaching coming from? And the fact that he's openly and excitedly welcoming women to be a part of his ministry. And she seemingly has decided he's more than just a teacher because she repeatedly calls him Lord. 
And even in this kitchen moment, in this kitchen conversation, she calls him Lord in the midst of her worry and frustration and anxiety. Now the text says that she's just distracted, that she's distracted by many things, by her tasks. But that really doesn't do justice to the original language. Now scripture was not initially written in English, it was written in Greek or in Hebrew. And in the New Testament, in Greek, it says distracted, but there's this, this deeper connotation of, of anxiety, of worry, of, of something that is just underneath the surface, this, this sense of, of anxiety that she is carrying. And can't you just see her in the kitchen, doing the dishes, fulfilling her role as a host, not just as a woman, but as a host in this time, because this is her house. Jesus has come to her home. And in fact, Jesus has just taught about hospitality. And in ancient Israel, just like in Southern states of the United States, so hospitality is an art form. It is expected, it is required. It is something that you must offer to guests. And so as she is holding this anxiety and this worry, She's in the kitchen, she's cleaning dishes. And can't you just imagine that Jesus gets up for a drink of water? The text might not tell us the exact circumstances of their conversation, but I can only imagine it like this, that he approaches her and she says, I can't believe that my sister isn't helping me. And then this is his response to her. Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things but there is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. Now, a lot of times we can read this and, and biblical scholars disagree about what Jesus is trying to convey here. It would be great if we could actually hear the tone of voice that he were to use when he was talking with her. Maybe it's a scolding and he's saying, Martha, 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 why can't you just let this go? But there's nothing in the text that actually tells us that. And that's maybe not exactly what Jesus is doing. Instead, he names, you are worried and distracted. He comes into the kitchen. He comes to this woman who in this time and in this culture and in this day and age is probably very accustomed to being ignored and being cast aside and being forgotten. And he says her name twice. I, I can almost feel the grace in that second time that he says her name so that she will actually hear it in the midst of her anxiety. Martha. And what does he do then? He names the content of her heart. He names what she is carrying and holding. You are worried and distracted by many things. God knows the content of our hearts and loves us regardless. And I have to wonder what Martha is worried about. In the words of Jesus, it seems like it might be deeper than just making sure the nicest dish platter that she has ends up on the table perfectly. In fact, she is a part of this movement. She is a disciple included in the group that follows Jesus. She is welcomed into his inner circle and his teaching. She has given her own means, not just her house, but her own means to support this ministry. And only a few chapters before this, Jesus predicts his own death for the very first time. In Luke chapter nine, he says to his disciples that he will be betrayed. And then there is a crucial part of this gospel of Luke, this, this biography of Jesus's life. And it starts in Luke nine and it's in verse 51. When the days drew near for him to be taken up, Jesus set his face to go to Jerusalem. Now that might seem like an interesting phrase, but what it really means is that Jesus has decided to go to the place where he will be crucified. So he has told his disciples, Martha among them, 
but he will be betrayed by human hands. And in his ministry, he's doing a lot of controversial things that are starting to rile people up. And then this crucial moment in the story of his ministry where he sets his face to go to Jerusalem. And where is Martha's house? Martha's house is a pit stop on the way to the cross, on the way to the crucifixion, on the way to Jerusalem, the city where Jesus will die. If we see the whole of the story, it's not hard to imagine what Martha might be worried about. But does she even really know the content of her heart? I can't tell you the number of times that I've landed in my parents' kitchen at a holiday. Most recently, it was in February as I was going back to work after having our son, and I felt so inadequate. How am I going to do all of this? How am I going to have a kid and a job and manage all of these things and be a good pastor and a good wife? And it's just too much. But I didn't really know that that was what was going on in my heart. I didn't know that that is what I was dealing with. And so I'm doing dishes. I'm trying to exercise my anxiety out. And I just feel my mom's hand on my shoulder. And she named what I couldn't. Can't you see that maybe that's this kitchen conversation that Jesus is having with Martha? Martha, Martha, you're distracted by many things. You're worried about so many things. And you don't have to be. Couldn't this be a moment where the Savior who has already decided to give his life is saying, I will take care of you. Mary has chosen the better part because she has allowed Christ to care for her in the way that only Christ can. Are you trying to exercise your own anxiety somewhere? Whatever you might be dealing with in your life, whatever might be stirring in your heart that you can't even name, maybe you need a kitchen conversation with Christ. Now, he might not be physically here, but we hold to the promise that the Holy Spirit is with us always, that the love of Christ is offered to us in every moment, even when we try to hide away in our own anxiety and in our own worry. Dorothy Sayers puts it beautifully when she says, perhaps it is no wonder that the women were first at the cradle and last at the cross. They had never known a man like this man. There never has been such another, a prophet and a teacher who never nagged at them, never flattered or coaxed or patronized, who never made arch jokes about them, never treated them as the women, God help us, or the ladies, God bless them, who rebuked without querulousness and praised without condescension who took their questions and arguments seriously, who never mapped out their sphere for them, never urged them to be feminine or jeered at them for being female. Instead, Christ meets us in the midst of our own worry and anxiety in those kitchen conversations and reveals that God knows the full content of our hearts and loves us regardless. I hope today that we can hear that message wherever you are, whatever you're facing, and that we might receive that grace that transforms our lives. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we confess to you that so many times we try to hide away from your love. We hide ourselves behind our worry and our anxiety and oftentimes we assume that those things are too small for your notice. Forgive us. Help us to have eyes to see that you invite us into these grace-filled conversations where you remind us over and over again, we are loved regardless. We are welcomed regardless. And that your grace is always offered to us. 
Help us to be like Martha and receive those words and that invitation. All this we pray in Christ's name. Amen. I'm Pastor Scott Luganbill, and I want to thank you for joining us in worship today. If you were inspired by the service, we encourage you to like this video and subscribe to our FEMCR YouTube channel. Also, if you ever felt the need to connect with the pastor over coffee, we have a program for you. Visit FEMCR.com slash coffee for more information and to schedule a time to meet with me or other FEMCR pastors online for a chat. Wherever you are, whenever you find this video, we pray you are blessed and encouraged. Have a joyful week.